Perfect. It's not recording. All right, go ahead, brother. All right. All right, my name is Dwayne. Um, I'm into filmmaking. I like doing short videos, short music videos, anything doing with photography. I'm all about that. Uh, but for now, I've been following him on Instagram for a moment. So he's really into uh, short films and stuff. That's why I follow him. So I'm here to, I guess, network. Grow my network. Just see what's this about. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you for, for showing up. Um, Chris, are you here? Christopher, you want to introduce yourself? Well, what's good, y'all? My name is uh, Christopher St. Mary. If you would talk about me. <laughs> yes, sir. Is there another one in there? Oh, what's good, <laughs> y'all? <laughs> um, man, I'm from Houston. Um, I'm a filmmaker, actor, um, artist. I make some pretty cool music, uh, but that's not my thing. That's just a hobby. I'm. Um, what else did y'all want to know? I don't know. Any, any <laughs> I guess fun, I'm just a fun fact. Where are you going right now? Where am I going right now? I'm headed to to the beach right now. Actually, okay. it's uh, I like it in the evening because it's a little bit uh, it's cooler. You know, right now I feel like the Devil Hills outside. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. Appreciate you for uh showing up. Love it. Peace. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Um uh Olu, how you doing, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? I'm I'm chilling, I'm doing good, man. Good to, good to hear from you. You want to introduce yourself to the group? Yeah, sure. One second. Let me put on my camera. Can you guys? Oh, hold on. Put on this light. Is this working? I'm not sure if it's working. You sideways, but we can see you. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay, that's better. There you go. All right. Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, my name is Olu. I was part of the uh, second cohort, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm based in New York City. Um, yeah, I mean, I just saw the text you you send out. I'm like, okay, because I'm in, I'm interested in content creation. Um, I actually started um, on my Instagram and my social media. I actually started posting like. Um, Rails, you know, just like um, funny comedic rails, um, you know. So I just started doing that maybe like in April, and I just want to, you know, get some more knowledge in terms of um, just content creation in general. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Cool. Thank you for showing up, bro. Appreciate you. Yep. Yep. Of course. Lewis, would you like to mm -hmm. introduce yourself? Sure. Let's see. Hi, my name is Lewis, and I'm based out of Houston, Texas. Um, I've been a flight attendant for about 18 years, but I've been doing acting for the last four, which I really enjoy, and I would like to do it a lot more, do it more full-time. So I'm here to learn any way that I can make it go forward from here. Absolutely. Appreciate you for showing up. Good to see you, beloved. Zakia, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, hold on. Let me put myself on camera. There she is. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. Can't complain. I'm just doing some introductions. Okay, I came in a little late, so I'd give you my name and what else? Your name, where your location, your social security, your your, your credit <laughs> card information. <laughs> you almost got it. <laughs> right, nah, just your name, your location, uh, what you do, and you know any fun fact about yourself. Okay, um, my name is Zakia. I am based out of Atlanta right now, um, but I'm not from here. I move around a lot. 
but um said why am I here I'm here to learn <laughs> um learn, here to learn more about what to do with my scripts after I'm done writing them um kind of how to either sell them or you know just what I can do with them I know I can create the film project but I know there's other things I can do so I'm just here to learn really um cool fact about me I have a dog a husky who you'll probably hear running around here at some point um I try to keep myself on mute but yeah that's it where'd you say you were located Atlanta Atlanta okay cool got you Make it sure we we gonna all exchange like social media. Make sure that you take a note of where everybody is at. If you guys are in the same city, you know, please link up. We're all creatives here, striving to take it to the next level. So, thank you for showing up and for sharing. Aaliyah, how you doing? Hello, I'm well. How are you? Doing well, family. Good to see you. Good to be seen, man. Good to be seen. Okay, so what do I say? My name, I'm sorry, I know you just explained it to her, but yeah, just introduction, name, location, what you do, what you about, you know, fun fact about yourself, all of that good stuff. Okay. All right. My name is Aliyah Muhammad. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm an actress. I have been acting for about 15 years now. I'm nervous. Oh my god. Uh a fun fact about me, I have two puppies. They look depressed right now, but I promise y'all I'll take care of them. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, my brother. Uh, those is puppies? Them is grown dogs. What you talking mm -mm, about? Mm -mm, they puppies. <laughs> they're my puppies. <laughs> puppies. Um, yeah, and I recently started being interested in content creation because... Like whenever I first started acting, everything was in person. But nowadays it seems like everything is like online. And if you don't uh -huh. understand online, then you know, you at a loss at this point. So I'm just trying to keep up with the times, trying not to act my age, trying to uh, stay with the younger group, I guess. Right, absolutely. Okay, cool. Thank you for uh, sharing. Thank you for showing up and we appreciate it. Ajima. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You wanna introduce yourself to the group? Yeah. Hello, 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 everyone. I go by Queen Ajima theatrically. Um, I'm born and raised here in LA, <laughs> but I represent Sierra Leone, always West Africa. Um, I am an all around creative. I am an actor, dancer, model. Um, I've recently become a writer and a director within my own short film that's coming out soon. I will hold off on the dates once it's fully edited, you know? <laughs> um, I do have a project that's out now on Amazon Prime and it will also be an Essence Fest next week. I have been rushing around, thank you. I've been rushing around like crazy because I leave town tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> uh, fun fact, I know how to juggle with three of the same objects. It has to be a circle, it has to be a ball, it has to be the same size. It's the only way I know how to juggle. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. I didn't know that. Thank you. It's a fun fact. That's why. <laughs> Absolutely. Tiffany, what's the deal? What's my name? <laughs> Tell us your name, beloved. Um, my name is Tiffany Campbell. Uh, I'm from Ohio, but I'm currently based in a, um, in LA. Uh, what did you say we had? I'm a filmmaker, writer, author, uh, actress, producer. Uh, yeah, all those things. And um, I'm here because Romel begged me to show up. So. <laughs> 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 I'm here. Uh, but fun fact. Oh, I'm the youngest of seven, so that's my fun fact. Seven? So. Yeah, I have six brothers and sisters. Hey, uh, your daddy, you going crazy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of them are my dad, so yeah, you're right. Hey, shout out to Pops, man. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Seven. <laughs> you And you the baby? I'm the baby, yep. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. But I'm I'm the oldest 
in my mind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Bye. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate you. Um, um okay. So boom. Chance, go ahead. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name's Chance Memo. Um, I live in Los Angeles. I'm 16 years old. I'm an actor. Um, I'm an artist, but I'm really just focused on the acting. I joined this class so I can um, obtain as much game and as many tools as I can before I dive deeper into the industry. And I'm just, you know, that's me. Yes, sir. Appreciate you for sharing. Um. Hold on one second. Boom. All right, Camille. Any introductions? <laughs> uh, okay, so my name is Camille. I'm born and raised here in Dallas, Texas. Um, I am 21 years old, even though I don't look like it. Um, and I'm an actor. I'm an actor. Fun fact about me. Um, I can sing really well. I'm a singer. I used to model. Mm. That's something. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I don't think I knew that. Okay, I didn't know you sing. Oh yeah, I can. I can blow. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Um, and Adrian, we're gonna get to your introduction later, bro. I got a, you know, I got a whole little thing for you, so we'll we'll hold off on that. Um. As, like I said, I want how I want to start the session. Um, you know, we're like I said, we're in our last session as far our as far as our professional acting uh group coaching. So we're gonna be presenting, you know, a couple business plans just to, you know, dive into the next steps for um the career of our actors and everything like that. And then we're gonna uh, transition into the topic of content creation in our introductions with our, our special guests. Chance, you have a you have a question. Oh, I forgot my fun fact. I just want to say it. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I dunked on Baron Davis and beat him in the game of 21. So, yeah, that's my fun fact. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Yes, sir. That's a hell of a fun fact. <laughs> All right, Chance. Um, speaking of fun fact, you want to um go first as far as your, your uh presentation, as far as your business plan and next steps I you need to do take, going forward? Yeah, I think I think uh, Camille had her hand raised first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let her go first. Oh no no, no 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 no! I did not have my hand. I think Ajima, Miss ah. hand raised first. <laughs> the air hilarious, even though I wasn't in class last week for sure. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, they selected you, Ajima. <laughs> okay. Um. Being that I was not in class last week, even though Romel gave me a heads up this morning, I've been running around all day. I've only recently been home. <laughs> um, As far as like a business plan. So my brand is my name, Queen Ajima. And within my brand, I model, dance, act, and do fitness. Um, And if you know Queen Ajima, it's just like a vibrant, upbeat personality and colors. Um. Sorry, one of my projects just popped up. Um, so what I've been doing recently is one, one, I need to create more content. Um, so one of the things I've been doing has been meeting with photographers. I've met with about three different photographers, one that I just met with before I got here to figure out different um, photo shoots for me to do because I know when it comes to being a creative and being um especially an actor like we have to utilize social media a lot more so um I need to post on my Instagram more even though social media is a hassle I must utilize it so um I've been creating um ideas as far as photo shoots to do and video shoots to do when it comes to lifestyle editorial um fitness um working on videos for um my fight choreo um to utilize for my acting career as well as um fitness to reach out to fitness brands like nike and puma eventually um 
So that's that for as far as like social media and content creation, um, still along the line of content creation, I still am working on my short action comedic film. Um, we are in the second draft of editing right now. I met with my editor last week. Um, he literally just sent me my project, which popped up now. So I am in second draft of editing. Um, we're going to start doing audio sound files, music and all of that all of July. And um, eventually, um, hopefully finish by end of August so I can start sending out to um, to film festivals um, and do like a private screening for it as well. Um, and then as far as just like my career, I'm still self-submitting. Um, um, I do have my manager who's helping me work with my brand and um, I do have a new agent, but I know where I want my career to go. And that's um, like we talk within our brand is just like um, an EGOT winner that does her own stunts and fights for um, eventually I will get into like Marvel. So um, the plan just goes photo shoots, video shoots promotions and continuously creating more short films eventually a feature film and I'm working on two other projects with friends where I'm working on a feature film where I'm writing with one friend and I'm working on a series where we're finishing up the pilot episode this week for writing oh congratulations on all that that's really that's really cool my question is you know I've based on our our initial conversation I remember we were talking about branding and we were talking about you know you you understanding your branding, but you wanted to get more specific on it. Do you feel like the you've added spec? I mean, it sounds like you have, but like, what has been the journey as far as the specificity? Do you feel like you have more specificity now as far as the plans for the content creation, and also coming off of the heels of talking about our career goals? Now that you've kind of narrowed it down, do you feel like that's helped with the type of content that you need to create? Mm -hmm. I definitely do because one of the biggest goals is like I want to do action films and I know we talked about too like Marvel and like we have like um, Gina Prince with Woman King who I'm hoping there's going to be a Woman King too so that goes within fitness and content creation so with my short film it's action packed you know um, with a little bit of comedy and then when when it comes to like the photo shoot it's fitness because we're showing off not only video shoots of fight choreo which goes along with action and film but also fitness as far as staying in shape and making sure i'm right for these roles mm, okay now that sounds that sounds really dope you're adding specificity to the content so it's like all right you're showing yourself in this light so this is how you're going to be received and then when it comes to casting when they come across your profiles, it's like, okay, she's legit. She's doing this. She has this training. You're putting that training on your resume. So you're adding specificity to the type of, not only are you adding specificity to the type of roles that you're going to be going out for, you're showcasing yourself it as that in your actual content. It's not just a theory. It's actually, it's like you're putting yeah. You're bringing it into reality. And that's the, that's what I like. You know what I'm saying? And you're not waiting on casting to cast that, to cash <laughs> that you're presenting yourself as that already, which is really dope and was going to help you uh, land those, those bigger roles as far as like woman King and all that kind of stuff. So sounds like a solid game plan to me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. I'm inspired. That's dope. Oh, thank you. I like to pass the mic to a woman that can sing very well, but does not uh, live in LA. <laughs> <laughs> shameful, shameful. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> It's joking. <laughs> okay, I don't know how I can. She was just right there, but okay, I'm gonna try to meet with it. Um, so our my brand in the beginning was uh to be an award winning actress, um, and um uh, my action steps will be to go ahead and uh nail some good headshots that are, I don't know, I'm still struggling to find a good photographer out here in Dallas, but um. But yeah, headshots, I want to get into some more acting classes just to kind of build up my training. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be doing some self-submitting with this, which is um, the auditioning pro process. Um, and then also um, connecting with people, like doing different workshops and um, all that good stuff to kind of build my arsenal with um, people that I do know that's in this, in this industry. 
Um, and then also building my social media. Um, I'm thinking about um, adding in, in addition to acting, I want to do a little modeling here and there. Um, so I'm thinking about, um, I'm still still in the works, but um, doing some model like having model like photography like pictures on my social media platform um because honestly like if you were to go on my social media right now you would not know that I'm acting or modeling like mm -hmm. you wouldn't know so um I kind of want to rebrand my entire social media platform completely um so once you do go on there you'll see oh she's an actress oh oh you know she's oh she does modeling here and there oh, okay that's what's up like oh she can sing like stuff like that that's what I want um and then and yeah that's that's just my starter for right now until I come back to the surface board maybe three months from now and change all of this up according to my brand right okay cool thank you for sharing and I know that you know um initially when we initially had a conversation you mistake me if I'm wrong you were more so like you were kind of figuring out you know, navigation and how to navigate and what steps you need to be taking and, you know, kind of confused on the navigation of your career. Do you feel like you have more clarity now with, you know, now that you've, with the information and the data that you've collected throughout the six weeks, do you feel like you have a clear direction on what you need to do uh, from here on out? Oh, yeah, no, most definitely. Um, I feel more on a straight path than I did before I took this class. Um, and even me just realizing what, you know, what kind of things that I want to do. Like, I know I don't want to do too many, like television. I know I want, I want to do more film as far as movies is concerned. And I didn't realize that until I took this class. Like I knew, you know, I want to act, but I didn't know what kind of acting I wanted to pursue. Kind of um, so, you know, you're gonna oh, it's kind of, we've been hand in hand for me. So I was able to really take what I learned in this class and kind of implement it into my career and then even futuristically um, be able to do the exact same thing. And this is like a, as I mentioned, more of a starter thing for me. So once this is, I accomplished these things three months from now, maybe four months from now, I'll be able to come back to the drawing board and say, okay, and say, okay, you know, what is, what's next for me? Like, what am I going to do now? Like stuff like that. So, yeah. Right. And I remember us talking the other day and like it, what's really inspiring about what you're saying is the fact of the matter of like what I try to tell people as far as like, all right, if you don't add specificity to what you're doing, you can be wasting a lot of money and time because it's like, OK, you can be taking these classes and not realizing that that's not even the type of training that you need based on the type of career that you actually want. You know what I mean? So uh, you kind of had an epiphany the other day. It was like, oh, I realized that, you know, I don't even need this type of training because this is not what I want to do. But when you first start off, they kind of just tell you to get an acting class. But what does that actually mean? We need to figure out what type of training we actually need versus just doing anything and everything. What I like is that you're adding specificity and, you know, you you just said it. You're on, you're, you feel like you're more on a straight path versus just not really knowing the direction on where you're going. So that's inspiring to me. So thank you for sharing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, now I know everything needs to be according to my brand. Like if it doesn't fit, it's not going to be there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Who is there anything else that you want to share? Mm -mm, no, okay. Yes, sir. Were you talking to me? Oh, I heard. I thought you said something. Did you say something? No, I, I didn't. Okay. Got you. Chance. Yo, 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 yo. Um, um, <clears throat> So my the steps for my game plan was basically um after I finish this act after I finish this class since today is the last class, all the stuff that I have learned I want to review like briefly each class that we had that we already had and like take back any notes that I may have missed that might be key things for me to take down. Um, I already booked my headshots, so I wanna um I wanna get those done immediately as soon as possible. You know, two to three looks. I already have a couple ideas. I want to get them done as soon as possible. My professional photos. I want to create my acting resume, like with the work that I have done. And obviously I've been um focused. I've been doing a uh, mostly uh theater for a long time. So all theater work that I have done, I want to um implement that into my resume. I want to get that filled out as soon as possible. Um, I want to make a demo reel mostly 
the stuff I have done has been, like I said, theatrical. So all the stuff that I have done on the stage, I want to compile that to a video with the minimal stuff I have done in front of a camera. I want to have, you know, a small demo reel, then, you know, create a new one later. But I want to have that. And then I want to write like a, you know, I want to have an agent cover letter. So once I have all of those um, materials, I want to search for commercial agents, you know, like TV commercials, industrials, commercial print, things like that. And then after that, I want to begin to search for an agent. You know, that's I feel like that's the most that's a very key thing for me. I've never had an agent. And I feel like as if um, I've been I've been uh, I wanted I've been wanting I've been wanting to do acting for two years now, not wanting to do it. I've done it. But I feel like if I two years ago when I was 14, if I had gotten myself an agent, if I had taken professional photos sooner, if I would have done all of the important stuff I feel like I would have been um maybe just not as stagnant as I am right now I should say so I want to get on those as soon as possible um I want to find an acting coach I've never had one and I don't think that I'm a bad actor but I know that if since I haven't had one I feel like most of the stuff that I do do when I am performing or when someone asks me to read for this or read for that um I may have the same way so I want to get an acting coach so I could branch out and verse, uh, um, have, be more versatile as an actor, you know, maybe um, know how to do things different or go at a, a script or um, reading uh, differently. You know, I want to have different methods of my acting, if that makes sense. You guys understand what I'm trying to say. Um, I want to network more. I want to stay in contact with people, not just like uh, to benefit me, but just so I have a circle of people like-minded as myself, you know, so I could be most productive. I feel like I'd be most productive if I'm, if I'm around people who, um, have the same interests as me, you know, uh, like, uh, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. I, I hope you do at least. And I want to, uh, and I want to just, uh, build my social media, like more photos of me when I'm on set working on something, regardless if it's of me, um, being an extra, regardless if it's of me uh, just going on set with somebody I know who's filming themselves and me just behind the scenes. I want to start, um, you know, photographing myself more and posting it. I want to start creating skits, original skits, and also like scene recreations. I just love that concept. So I want to start doing that more. I want to collaborate with people. I, I know a lot of people that I could work with and I feel like I should work with, but I just haven't reached out and extended that arm yet. So I want to collaborate with people with the same interests as me and just I just want to create content and I feel like the most important part which probably goes with me having an agent is um you know start auditioning right yes sir I appreciate you sharing that and you know I remember prior to the program you you already had your headshot session book like do you feel like you know now with the data that we've collected with the branding exercise and everything like that do you feel like you have um more clarity on the type of shots that you actually need to take yeah, most definitely. Versus before? Most definitely. Okay. Yes, most sir. Definitely. And, you know, one note, you know, I I, I know you, you, I'm hearing you say what you want to do, you want to, want to, want to. I would just slightly adjust that language to I'm going to, you know what I mean, instead of what you want to do, because it could just change the trajectory of you actually, you know, finishing and completing the task. You know what I mean? It's one thing to want to do it, but when you say this is what's going to happen, you know, just make it happen. So, and if you need any help, you need any resources, that's what this is all about. You know, you have photographers in here, you have, you have filmmakers in here, you have videographers in here. So at the end, we're going to connect and all, you know, share our social medias and make sure that you're utilizing these resources so that you could turn that want it into reality. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Um. All right, cool. So I see a few more people came in um, before we introduce our uh, filmmakers. I want to um, I see Jasmine and Bree Brown. If you guys want to introduce yourselves to the group, uh, we just did some before you guys came in. We gave some, you know, quick introductions, name, location, what you do and a fun fact about yourself. Jasmine, you can go first. And for anybody who is off camera, if you can come on camera, we would love to see your beautiful face. If not, we understand. Hey everybody, my name is Jasmine. Um, I am from South Carolina and um, I don't really have like a fun fact about myself, but um, I, like, I've, I, I've always wanted to be an actress and I actually, um, I participated in my first non-speaking role last month um, 
And it was just great just to be on set, just to kind of get my feet wet and get the feel of everything. So I'm still learning and I hope to network with new people, meet new people. And I hope, I, I hope everything goes well for each and every one of you as well as myself. And I'm from the last, the last cohort, by the way. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for pulling up and for sharing. Great to hear from you. Yes, yes sir. Bree, how are you? <clears throat> Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Can't complain. Good. I'm driving right now. Otherwise, I would have the camera on. I literally just got off work when I signed in. So, Hi, everybody. I'm Bree Brown. Um, I have a degree in journalism. Fun fact about me, I've lived an extremely crazy life for the past, like, five, six years, and I've been writing my story about it um, from scratch. And I keep going back and forth about it. That's actually something that I am doing. Like, I am determined to get my story done. I don't know if it's going to be, like, with visuals or if it's just going to be, like, a book or a memoir type of thing, but I want to get it out there. So that's part of my content creation ideas that I have going on right now. But I'm from Long Beach. I currently live in Riverside, and I was invited here by Chuck or Charles. Yes, ma'am. You say you're in the Riv? Yeah, I am. Are you? Where are you from? You said you're from Riverside, or you you're in Riverside? I'm from Long Beach. I live in Riverside now. Oh, you from Long Beach? Okay, yes, ma'am. Well, great to have you here. Thank you for pulling up, and um, yeah, great to hear from you. Thank you. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna get into our discussion, content creation. Um, before we do that, I want to introduce some filmmakers that um, have blessed us with their presence. We're gonna be chatting about you know, content creation, producing, production. These are people who I've worked with closely, who've been successful, who I admire, um, so if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll address it and we're just going to chop it up, you know what I'm saying, and geek out over some of this creative stuff and, you know, some projects that we've done um, that we're currently doing and we, you know, also are planning for in the future. So first and foremost, I want to introduce my guy, Dr. Charles Opong, who is a native of Los Angeles, born to Ghanaian, Ghanaian, Ghan, Ghan, Ghanaian? Is that how you say that word? Ghani Ian? No? How am I saying that? I'm butchering that. <laughs> how do you say that word? Ghani Ian. Ghani. Ghani Ian, parents from Accra region <laughs> and from the Ashanti kingdom. Oh my God. He's from royalty. Come on. Hey, Dr. Opong wears a proud Ghani Ian flag and embraces the Ghana roots behind Ghana yet to all black people of the African um, diaspora and speaks to pan-Africanism. His research includes film, critical race theory, economics, and the human development of the black family globally. Dr. Opong is a faculty lecturer in the College of Ethnic Studies teaching in the Department of Pan-African Studies at California State University, Los Angeles. He is also a subject matter expert and thesis chair at Pacific Oaks College in Pasadena. As a filmmaker and screenwriter, Dr. Opong facilitates the framework of research as they land themselves to the world, or they, as they lend themselves to the world view of components of entertainment within Hollywood, independent film to conceptual and theoretical paradigms of race, class, policy, and power of which include fatherhood, Black masculinity, and critical media literacies. Dr. Opong and his wife, a proud Nigerian woman, lives in Los Angeles with their two children. Charles is currently a professional researcher and lecturer and also professionally represented as an actor. He is also a freelance cinematographer and a photographer and runs a production company, he is married to his wife of about almost nine years, residing in Los Angeles, California with their two children. You guys give a warm welcome, applause, a round of applause to my guy, Charles, o Dr. Charles Opong. Sorry that I messed up your, bro. I did the best that I could. I love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I love you right back, man. I love you right back. Beautiful black people. Peace, peace and blessings to everybody. Um, 
man, I just have to say, first and foremost, give an honor to whom honor is due, uh, our brother Romel, um, a man of many hats, who I'm always happy to serve alongside with, as well as my good brother, AJ. Uh, thanks for having me, bro. I do appreciate it. Thanks for being here, bro. Love you, man. You look good with the with the, the lighting in the background. Come on, you look like a filmmaker. We call that the we call that the zoom zoom room, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it. All right. Next up, I want to introduce my guy Adrian Javon, who is a Los Angeles-based creative known for his professional photography, cinematography, and music. With the strong connection to his subjects always resonating clearly, Adrian's work has been described as soulful and inspiring and has allowed him to travel the world. His un his understated demeanor and extreme professionalism has made him to go to uh, many clients, including Richard and Miss Tina Lawson, Zendaya, Janelle Monet, and many more. Adrian also made his first acting cameo in Issa Rae's Insecure. That's a fact. Born and raised in Los Angeles, California, Adrian takes the Donald Glover approach and utilizes his many talents of film, photography, music, and dance to create an everlasting impression on his audience. You guys give a well, well, a, a, a warm welcome to my guy, Adrian Javon Martin. Thank you, bro. I met a few of you guys before, but it's good to see y'all again. Everybody else, it's good to meet you virtually. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be on here. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and then another filmmaker that I want to introduce is a good friend of mine. She introduced herself earlier, but I wanted to, you know, give her give her her, her just due. You feel me? Tiffany Campbell is an award winning independent filmmaker, screenwriter and author born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. As a young girl, Tiffany has always been inspired by visual storytelling through television shows like Family Matters and Fresh Prince to tell authentic stories that spoke to her generation. She got her start crafting her first story at the age of eight, writing her first book at the age of 12, and writing and directing her first screenplay at the age of 17. After a hiatus, she picked up her love for the visual arts in 2017 and released her first short film, Toxic, in 2020, which amazed nearly 350,000 views and counting. Come on, views, numbers. Tiffany is known for effort, effortlessly translating her faith in a relatable way through love, humor, and relational connection with watching and reading her work. Her audience has the ability to see themselves in her well-deserved characters while also taking away valuable lessons. Since 2020, Tiffany has written and produced a seven episodic web series, four short films, and has gotten her three novels in Malik Books in Los Angeles. Her most recent short film, 30, which I'm, I was in, you know, uh, premiered at the legendary Miracle Theater in Los Angeles, I mean, in Inglewood, California, in a full house, receiving a standing ovation. That was a fact. I was there. This is actual facts. Tiffany is based in Los Angeles, California, where she can be found learning more about God, building a supportive community of creatives and working on her first feature film, as well as developing her first pilot for television. With God at the forefront, she plans to inspire and impact many Black millennials, filmmakers to go after their God-given visions without compromising their integrity. You guys give a warm welcome to Tiffany Campbell. And also, we need to update this, this bio because there's some accomplishments that's not in there that I want you to speak to with these. Uh, you're on a festival run right now. T tell us about that. Yes. Yes. Um, so I got into Essence as well, along with Queen Adima. We're going to be uh, on Nigeria Day. So I think you're probably on, I don't know which. which we're on Friday. Day. I don't know what day okay. that is. All right, yeah, we're on Saturday, but we're gonna come check you out. I'm we'll gonna go there. check you out too. Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got into Essence um, and Me Show, which is here in Los Angeles. So we'll be uh, screening in LA for the second time um, on July 13th. So if any of you guys are coming to Me Show, please pull up to, um, our screening. And yeah, then we got into two other festivals earlier this year: Chicago Indie. Um, awards and then uh, LA shorts, I think, something like that. But yeah, so we're on a really good festival run right, right now. So proud of it. Probably. And yeah, Romel did a great job in it. 
He's like one of the the favorites of, uh, of yeah. the short. I'm the reason why I got into the festivals. What are you talking oh about? Oh my god! <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> Nah, congratulations. I'm extremely proud of you. And the thing that I really like about Tiffany is that, like, you know, she moved from Columbus to L.A. and she had to kind of navigate. So can you tell us what? Also, you sound a little muffled. What do you you got on AirPods or something? Oh, like yeah, that? I do. Hold on. Let me take them out. Yeah, take them out, please, because we want to hear you. OK. All right. Is that better? Much better. Um, I kind of want you to speak. To Wait, you. OK. Now I can't hear you, though. All right. Oh, I can hear you now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. What I want to, what I, I kind of want to start with you because I want you to talk about the transition from like moving from Ohio to Los Angeles and what is that like? Because we have people from all over in this group. There's people from, you know, Dallas, as you heard, uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. New York. So like, you know, a lot of people want to move to LA. How has that been for you? What are some things that's worked for you? What are some things that did not work for you? How has that transition been? Um... Honestly, it was hard at first. You know, I came out to LA. I knew a few people and um, a few people from Ohio had moved with me out here. Um, so I had like a few people I knew, but I didn't really know like the LA film community or how it worked. Honestly, what helped me in the beginning was Clubhouse. So when I first came, it was November 2020. And um, Clubhouse was like a thing at the time. And someone had told me to start getting a part of like the LA rooms and the filmmaker groups. So I was able to start meeting people, but it was honestly, honestly, a lot of people, when I came out here, people had saw toxic and I didn't know. So like they had already seen it. So when I would meet them, um, they were like, oh yeah, no, I know you made that film like toxic. I would love to work with you. So I think it was just like, I was making stuff in Columbus and I was putting it out and sharing it. And so if you're making content wherever you are, like share it, you never know like who could see it, who could come across it. So doing that, it already, uh, my reputation kind of preceded me when I came. Um, but it wasn't until I started, you know, meeting people that were willing to like help me and guide me like Oluwa Twin, who ended up directing 30 and Romel, um, that really like, really acclimated me into like LA culture and how it works. Like um, I coming out here, I didn't have anything written. I didn't know when I was going to work on anything. Um, and when 30 came, I just kind of started asking people that I met, you know, if they could like help me produce this and bring this to life and, and what they thought. Um, so a lot of it was just by just natural, just connection um, and meeting people. But it was like what I had already started back home. It kind of helped my transition in LA to be a lot smoother because because I wasn't in LA, I didn't that didn't stop me from being a creative and making stuff with people that I knew in my city. Um, so I would just say wherever you are, just just create and do what you can with the resources that are around you because you just never know um, who's willing to help you and and invest in you. So, right. <clears throat> okay cool thank you thank you for sharing that that's very interesting um it made me think of uh i kind of want to ping pong to to charles real quick being you know that you have this uh these roots and this origin in ghana right like how has your creative process been you know being in los angeles and having connections in africa because i know that when we talk you were out like at, at one point you were out there shooting projects. So you're pretty global with your filmmaking. Like tell us about that process, Charles. Like how has that been for you in navigating the film industry and relationships that you have that others in LA might not have? Thanks, bro. Um, that's a good one. I think it's all about where you're at. Originally, I started to write a series called Culture Shock, which is still on the way. We just shot five episodes. Uh, and with that and going to Ghana, it was just easy to kind of take the lifestyle in which I've grown up in being first generation to Ghanaian parents and just not understanding what I was, who I was, you know, the melanation of how dark I was as a small boy here in LA. I'm from West Adams district, you know, by way of Crenshaw district. And I went to Dorsey. Um, I went to Cal State Northridge and, you know, um, my dad's church is a stone throw away from, 
you know, rolling 60s, you know, right there where Nipsey, you know, had a shop, the very shop that he died in front of. So like I'm raised in that area, you know, my mom's shop, you know, uh, right across the street from West Angeles. And so um, I am Los Angeles, you know what I'm saying? Like my, my brother right now is putting on for the city with what he does musically. And so just really staying true to those origins and who we are as African people, but as black people, but as American people, because we are American, we built this country. Taking that back and having my people back home, you know, and making them understand that it's not what you think it is, you know? Uh, the black man is a dying breed, as Tupac would put it, you know, over here. Meanwhile, over there, they suffer under different conditions, right? So it's the same, but it's different. And so I just kind of take that, uh, write, direct, and produce uh, for myself and for others in that vein, just staying true to that. Uh, working with all ethnicities and nationalities, people of all backgrounds, and yeah, just really connecting, you know, just just tapping in and plugging in into everything that's happening in, in Accra, you know, and also in, within the central region. Um, right now working on a documentary uh, that is central to black people. It's called We Are Here. And it has some pretty cool notable names that you all may know uh, behind it that are executive producing it, which is still under NDA, but it takes place in Ghana where our black American brothers and sisters are going over there and talking about something called African-centered education, which is omitted from the education here, right? This is one of the things that they're trying to rid within Florida called ethnic studies. And so ethnic studies is important, but we don't want to generalize and talk about ethnic studies. We want to talk about African-centered education. And so I feel like that education has to lend itself somehow, some way. Big shout outs to you know, folks like Issa Rae or Jordan Peele, somehow, some way they find ways and means to incorporate the story of African people within their stories when they themselves may not be directly from the continent. Issa Rae's folks are from Africa, but she is still staying true to those roots and representing. So representation does matter in the vein of not just being black, but understanding the trace of those roots of where we're from and authentically playing that out within the screenplay and visually on the screen. So. Yeah, like our our folks back home are excited about, you know, being part of the storyline and the screenplay of, you know, like for instance, what Tiffany just spoke about, you know, just finding your way and navigating here through LA, you know, but also letting them know it's not what you think it is. And that's why I'm grateful for, for folks like you, Romel, um, in which you do have this medium and this platform and this educational resource for our, our people, for all people really, right? Because if it's not for all people, they'll never understand us. And we're always going to be boxed into some typecast or some type role. Uh, hence, it's one of the undertones of why there's a writer strike right now in Hollywood. So, and there's a lot of Nigerians who are part of that, right? Like they are literally some of the backbone of why Hollywood exists the way it exists now, right? So, so yeah, I mean, um, it, if that helps or if that answers anything, hopefully. It does. I appreciate you, bro. How do you pronounce that word? Ghanaian? I, 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 that that had my my yeah. tongue tied. Ghanaian. It can go, yeah, it can go either way. Ghanaian or Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse my ignorance. I'm a you know I'm an LA baby. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Don't say that. You're not ignorant. We all learn, bro. You good? Yes, sir. It's just the fact that yeah. you've been thinking about that for the last. 20 it's been years. bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying from that too. <laughs> it was in there hella times. I'm like, I gotta butcher this a lot of times. Like, I gotta yeah. figure out how to say this word. This is crazy. Don't um, worry. When, when you go, they will spank you well, and they will tell you, "Oh, you are Nakata." You know. <laughs> then, then after that, they will accept you. You know, but you're gonna go through your process real quick. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I wanna swing it to my boy Adrian real quick. I I. I want to, I, I have to say this because I've said it to you, but I wanted to like sink in that like, all right, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker because of this man. You know what I mean? Like I have eight short films because of this man. Like a lot of people will hit me up asking me filmmaking questions. And then they're like, oh, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? I'm like, shit, I don't know. Like, Ad like Adrian came up with that. What are you talking about? Like this man is a, 
genius. He's a cinematographer. He's not even, he does everything. Like, this is the argue, like, this probably is the most talented man that I know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just saying that. It's like, you know, without Adrian, I don't have a career. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's shot all of my films. So it's like, he is the creative genius. You know, I'll have the concept and I'll have the, the the idea but when we get on set he's coming up with shots i'm like bro how does your mind even think like that i didn't even think to shoot it like that and then people will ask me how i did it i'm like it's not me it's this man so <laughs> I, I your bio stuck out to me because you know it, it, it in your bio says your work has been described as soulful and inspiring which is an understatement right but what it made me think of is this this style that you have. Like, how have you been able to develop a style for yourself where it's like when we see something, I can tell that that's Adrian. You know what I'm saying? Like, Adrian, like, that's his work. How did you develop this soulful style that is very poetic, yet it's soft and it's like, you know, very, uh, I want to say you can feel it. It's very impactful. There's a, there's emotion in it. There's soul in it. Like, how are you able to, to do that and translate it visually as motion pictures and pictures? Because you're a photographer as well. So um, I want to give you your flowers because this is how I feel about you, bro. Like, when we're on set, I'm amazed, <laughs> at, I'm amazed at, like, how you do this. So how, do, how are you able to develop this kind of distinct style and voice for yourself? Dang, bro. I'm overwhelmed, man. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the love, man. And I'm I can't say that I'm I would be, you know, where I, I am in my career had we not have collaborated in the ways that we have, bro. So thank you also, man. Um that's a great question. I think when I first started photography, mind you guys, I, I started photography before I started uh doing film and videos. Um I never saw myself doing film in any type of way. Uh, I started photography in high school and then as I got better, people used to tell me like, yeah, eventually you're going to get into videos. I never, I never thought it would be true until I started it. Um, but I think that as far as like the soul and I guess my style, I just been intuitive in what I wanted to create and how I wanted to shoot uh, my subjects and even myself. Um, and I think that that just resonates the spirit in a sense of what's being shown or who is being shown. Um, so I guess just my intuition man, and, and being intuitive on what, how I want people to receive what it is that I'm giving or sharing. Um, and I think that just resonates within the photos or, or film. Um, I, I, I enjoy, creating concepts that are true to my life or inspired by real events. Um, I think that helps as well. Um, and really being straightforward in, in whatever that emotion is that we're trying to, to, uh, to show and share so that people can really feel it, you know, and not shine away from Oz is too much or, or, you know, is, should we should we reel it in? And it's like, nah, it's, if it's real, why not? People need to feel it. People need to understand. People need to to see, you know, what it is and able, able for them to connect to whatever it is that we're sharing. So I think that that being mindful of that uh, throughout my career, and I'm still learning a lot, but I think that that's helped me um, continue to 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 share, you know, whatever that soul or spirit that people are seeing and feeling. Oh, you're on mute, bro. <laughs> oh, I said, nah, that's dope. I appreciate you for sharing that because um, I always wonder, because I I don't, and I want I want Charles to, to speak to this too, because um, for me, as far as, far as my creative process, I want to start getting kind of, steer us towards like the, the conversation of the actual process. Cause there's one thing to like see the end result. Right. But I think it's more important to talk about that grind, that day-to-day -day actual process of what it actually takes to do this stuff. It's not easy. You know what I'm saying? So being that me, you and Charles, we've worked very closely together. Um, as far as like your creative process, right. Cause for me, my creative process is 
I like, I believe that this work for me is divine, right? Like God literally gives me the vision and I see how to execute it. I know he's giving me the skill to put people in place. Like I'll reach out to an Adrian. I'll reach out to a um, Tiffany as a writer. I could reach out to a Charles. He's a producer. Bring us all together. I have that ability, right? But what I don't have sometimes is the actual eye of capturing the images. Like I'll have an idea in my head, but I, I rely heavily on my DP. That's why me and you, we work very well together because I'll have a way of how I want it to go. I'll bring it to you. You enhance it. And I'm like, damn, I didn't even think about it like that. What is your actual creative process when it comes to capturing images for photography, videography? And the same kind of question that I have for you, Charles, like what is your process when you're developing a project? What is the the step-by-step -step on how to actually have an idea but then bring it into fruition and distribute it. Like, what is that day to day like for you as far as the skill set that you actually possess? You want to be first to bat, AJ? And I'm, I, I'll just kind of come off the cuff with you. It's kind of, yeah. I mean, I don't mind. It's kind of tough for me to say, honestly, bro, because I, I think, if anything, I'll, I will write whatever concept it is or idea. Mm -hmm. I think writing it down is the the start to manifesting it and, and actually, you know, creating it. Um, so for me, you know, if I'm doing, say, um, I do music too, right? So if I'm doing a music video, I write down a concept. I will um, find locations. I will uh, reach out to whoever it is that I may want to shoot it. If I'm not shooting it myself, um, and I will also, I end up directing whatever that film or video is as well. Um, and well, before that, I gather my crew to uh, support me in whatever ways uh, from uh, producer, executive producers, uh, or um, uh, stylists from, um, and even editors, if needed, I usually edit my own stuff uh, most of the time, but but uh, I'll try to find them as well. And then if I'm editing my own projects, usually I am. I usually sit with it for, I don't know, it could be three days to a week to two weeks. A month. It could be a while. But I, once I know it's done is when I can watch it fully and not have any critiques or not not have any changes at all um so that's that's usually my process and then once i feel that it's ready on the inside then i release it and move on to the next project or um whatever creative endeavor whatever that may be yeah i mean in a similar vein i agree with you bro um cpp Concept, paper, production. Uh, that production process has three steps, uh, pre, pro, and post. And so same thing goes with music, like what AJ just said. Uh, for instance, we worked on John, the three of us worked on John. I want to say it was probably one of the most seamless processes that I've gone through as a producer, but there were other things that needed to be picked up and personnel-wise, you really have to account for it, like AJ said, uh, crew. It's one of the things that we're doing right now with the next film it is that we're working on, which is a concept from AJ. Uh, the CPP process for me really entails uh, time and just managing that time. At the very beginning, the concept, um, it, it can change uh, at any given point in time, but I feel like what makes for a great film, right? Because Ramel, you did say, uh, everybody sees this, you know, this beautiful artistic visual once it's done. But the things that go into that, you know, you you sacrifice some time. If you have kids, if you you know, if you have other responsibilities and whatnot, and you don't get paid for making a film unless one of these majors calls you and your name is Spielberg or Peel or whatever the case may be. And sometimes you have to like pitch for that, right? If it's an idea, otherwise. You have a motion picture deal and you have to finish that deal. You have money on the table. 
it's different as an independent filmmaker. It's a very lonely process. You really have to rely on people to lift you up. Uh, for me, a lot of prayer goes into it. And as a writer, you have to tweak and go back. And what's called the final draft is not going to be a final draft when you put it in the hands of folks and you have typos and so on and so forth. Trusting the editor of your screenplay. Uh, that is, if you are humble enough to say, hey, I'm going to have somebody edit this. Writing is a very personal thing. And so you don't just want anybody touching your work. And so what proximity do you have to uh, people like a Tiffany or Ramel, you know, or if there are any other writers in this room right now, <laughs> writer's room, who are going to look at your script and say, I think you should do this and you'd be open to that. And so that concept part to me precedes the writing because you have to ideate over it. You got to take showers over it. You got to go camping over it. You got to go to a basketball. You got to sleep on it. Talk about it. I think another thing that helps too is just going through that process with people who you do trust not to, you know, throw water on your candle in terms of your candle being your your baby, your idea, and having people around who can actually nurture it. And so that's really important. Uh, one thing that we're very careful, careful to do uh, between the three of us, especially as Black men, is that we create the space for one another and that there's more questions than there are suggestions. So that concept phase for me and AJ, we'll just talk for hours. And AJ would be like, hey, you got that recording that we <laughs> you got that recording that we had from Zoom from some weeks back? Because sometimes, you know, the spirit that y'all feeling in the room, you know, if you let God in, you know, enough, it's important to write those ideas down because they may not come, they may not hit the same way next time. So the concept part, the ideation part to me is probably more important than the writing part. You'll spend less time writing if you concept well and bounce ideas off the right people. That is if you have the right people around you. And if not, just tap in and network and just use that spirit of discernment to find the people who are gonna love on you and nurture you and you know uplift you in that. Not people who are just going overly critique and people use this thing called constructive criticism. I don't really be believe in constructive criticism. Um, there shouldn't be criticism. I believe in harnessing and understanding and listening right, before we even critique. I think critique comes way later. There should be less critique and more listening because then the person's idea that started off as an ABC is going to end up being an RUI or something like that, something totally different from what they wanted. And that's no longer the vision. And they won't realize it until the end of the product and everything has gone through coloring, editing. And they're looking at it and they're like, I don't even like this project. This is not what I had, you know, to begin with. You know, the same thing goes with, you know, the production of a music video or song. You know, so I spend as much time with it on your own before you share it with, you know, the the small world around you, the three, five, 10 people it is that you trust. And then I think it should somehow go to paper on your own. And I mean, that's my personal process because writing is personal. And identify the people who you know are great photographers, cinematographers, AJ, great director, producer, and writers, Romel, you know, if you have somebody who is as colored as a Tiffany, you know, reach out to them and don't be afraid. And everybody is not going to get back to you on your time. So trust that process too, but find ways and means to kind of push it forward, you know, without those people. That way, when they do come, they're like, oh man, you know, you was at ground zero. And now, you know, you're at level five or level 10, whatever the case may be. And then a production process to me is the most fun. It's where everybody gets together. There's food, there's crafty, there's acting, there's Hold, marker, cut, action, you know, and then the most loneliest process back again is post-production. You got to get people to help you color it, edit, oh, edit it, you know, how many passes are we going to go through? That whole deal. Um, yeah, so I, to me, like AJ, that process, it, it's a lot of elbow grease that goes into it, but you got to give yourself a lot of tender love and care with that and be patient with yourself. Um, and then just study, the last thing I'll say is, I, I, all the black filmmakers y'all love, I love. I try not to watch them because cerebrally, right, at the back of like the hippocampus, the way we operate is that whatever it is you dream or whatever it is you see, you're naturally going to lift that. I was talking with my homegirl, Yvonne Orgy, and I threw an, um, an idea at her about six years ago. She had something that she was doing similar, but 
Maybe, maybe not, right? I mean, I know for sure I didn't lift from her, but when I gave her this idea of something that was around a, along the lines of first generation, she was just like, uh, yeah. And then, you know, we had this long conversation and before you know what she told me, she was like, but just be careful who you share this with because it may sound like you're lifting an idea, for instance. And she wasn't afraid to tell me that. And I wasn't afraid to hear that. And I was like, noted, salute, you know. Um, we just have to be careful of how we share and who we share it with, you know. But again, you know, she was one of those people who I could share with and I haven't heard anything back since, right? Like my stuff is still under NDA and so is hers. She put out a proof of concept with a few other people. She poured some money into it. Obviously she's been busy since then, but um, people in the industry are shady. They will rip your stuff, take your stuff and you won't even know it. You know what I mean? Before you know it, you are watching HBO Max. <laughs> And here goes your whole thing on the TV. So, yeah, yeah. Now nah, that's 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 interesting. Um, dang, I had a question, but I forgot. Um, you said something. You said something that sparked a thought for me. Um, was that along the lines of the production process or? The sharing process. Oh, okay. So you said, con what was it? You said CPP concept. Yeah. Concept paper and then production concept could take as long as it needs to be paper. Obviously is a screen, you know, the script itself, you know, just writing it in final draft and then production, all the P's right. Pre-production, production, post-production post CPP. Right. Yeah. I wanted to speak to that because this concept, I want to be clear because this concept can, be applied to all forms of content, right? Like whether it's short film, feature film, whether it's skits, um, you know, reels, like it, it all applies because that's how I approach, you know, even like short form type of content. Like if I have a skit idea, I have a concept. Okay, the concept around this is, okay, I think that this situation is funny, okay. Then I write it out like, OK, what is the actual joke? What is the structure of the actual skit? And then we go, boom, we we film it, we shoot it. Then a lot of it is improv. It's in the moment. So it comes off very naturally because it's not something that's super planned out. It's like the concept is planned out. The structure is planned out. Now me and the actor, we're freestyling and we go into production. Then we go into post-production which is now i gotta edit it now i gotta make it act an actual piece of content to distribute so this can apply for any level if it's a feature film it's the same concept right i have the concept then the paper part is me outlining the actual project okay i'm outlining the story what is the story that i'm telling you know what is the character arc what is my character going through who is the protagonist who is the antagonist put it on paper because now when you outline, it's going to help you to actually write the actual script. And then you go into pre-production because when you're putting it on paper, the paper part is development, right? You're in development. Then the production part is the three stages. Pre-production, production is the actual filming of it. Post-production is the editing, putting all the music, the score, you know, the color correction, all of that stuff. And then you have distribution, which is a part of production as well, because you want to actually put it out. And I like what Adrian was talking about is like his process. He made sure that he said to put it out. You know, I know a lot of creatives who don't put out their work. You know what I'm saying? They kind of just sit on things because maybe it's a vanity reason. You don't like the way that it came out, but it's just like, you got to put yourself out there because, you know, what's trash to you might be, you know, the best thing that somebody has ever seen, right? You never know, but you have to have content for people to, um, interact with you with they have to interact with your content kind of like what tiffany said before she even moved to la she was already putting out content that's why it was an easy trans night i won't i won't say easy but it was an easier transition to make relationships in los angeles because she has something to show for herself so now when she comes to la she's meeting people she's saying oh i'm a i'm an author i have this book i have this film i have toxic i have this now people are going to want to work with you you have a a a, a uh, you're increasing the likelihood of making the actual connections that you need to make because you have something to show. You're presenting that you're actually serious. And I wanted to kind of, I had a question for Tiffany being that, you know, you're somebody who I 
have a high level of respect for because you've seen the process all the way through. Like I saw you from development, right? Like you were meeting at Hilltop with Tiger. Y'all were coming up with the budget, trying to figure out you were producing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I get this done? Then you put a team together to actually get it done. You come up with the budget, you crowdfund, you raise the money, and then you kept having to delay the process, delay the process because you kept having to run into budget issues. Then you get the money that you need. Then you have to go location scout, solidify the locations. I remember visiting you on set. You were a little stressed out because of how everything was going, but it was going. It was flowing. I remember being on set as an actor, seeing the crew and seeing it all come into fruition. Then you have a screening for it. Now you're presenting the your idea that you had to an audience. Now it's going on festival runs. You're seeing the success of it, but... It was all that work that had to be done in order to see the success that you're seeing now. I kind of want you to speak to that process and how hard it was, you know what I'm saying? Like in, in what you had to go through in order to see it all the way through. Um, It was definitely hard. Uh, Honestly, when, when I wrote the script, um, I prayed. <laughs> I prayed after I wrote. So that was like my that was the first part of my process. And I said, God, if you want this done, you're going to have to fund it because I don't have any money. I don't have nothing to do this with. And two days later, I had a notification on PayPal for like $4,000, you know? So I just knew like God was a part of this. And I think that was like my main driving force to get it done, you know? Um, and just leaning on the relationships that I had with starting with toying and then, you know, having you guys read the script, like it was not easy. <laughs> and then with the delays, you know, like, I thought, oh, this is only going to take $10,000 to make. So I thought I was ready. Um, and I was working on a, I was working post-production um, for a television show with Sony at the time. And we had our dates locked in. We had everything locked in. And I went to ask for the days off. And they pretty much said, like, if you take those days off, you're not going to have a job anymore, you know? So I had to choose between really trying to get this done or keeping my employment at the time. And I had to go with my employment and I'm, I'm glad I did because honestly, if we would have shot at the time, I thought that we wanted to shoot. It wouldn't, this, it wouldn't have turned out this way. So always like trust the timing. If something is, is getting delayed and pushed back, like don't be discouraged because, you know, to me, like God's timing is perfect. And I felt like you know, when it actually came to shooting, like we needed $5,000 more than what we even had at the time. Um, and I'm grateful, you know, for my friend, like being able to give us that money so that we can bring it together. But, you know, like things come up last minute. Um, so I would say like really me having a team that I trusted and um, people who were just as passionate about getting this done as I was like it was important and we had to replace people you know we had an original DP when we started and you know she just wasn't as <laughs> excited she just didn't have the energy that we needed in order to really do it so like having to be very discerning about who you're bringing in who you're you know allowing to be part of your team um, you know we, I was just grateful that we were able to have just a very beautiful set in the midst of all of that and um, and that my team allowed me to be an actress because I was the lead actress in it as well. Um, and so I got a team that I trusted to let me just act and come on set. And, you know, they take care of like all the chaos and me wanting to be producer and, and do all that stuff like I wasn't really allowed to do. Um, but, yeah, I had I had a team I trust. I had God at the forefront. I prayed all the way through. Um, and that's really what helped me get through the end of the process even planning the premiere like you saw people like theaters weren't calling me back <laughs> they weren't answering the phone even with where we presented at like miracle like it was taking them forever to get back so um I was persevering because I wanted the team to get their flowers like I wanted my team to get recognized for all that they did and all their hard work like it wasn't about me anymore I took me out of the the forefront and was thinking like my team needs this so having a team I believed in, you know, really helped because I, I wanted them to get everything that they deserved and to get the opportunities that they needed. So with all of the stress and all the headache, that, that was like a year long process from idea conception to, you know, production, that was a whole year long process. Um, 
just having people around me, having God at the forefront, like that's really what what got me through. So, yeah. Beautiful. Um, and what um, what would you say? What have been the benefits of you coming out? Because you're an actress as well. So, what have been some of the benefits of you creating your own content? I actually get to act. <laughs> And I get to act in the things that I believe in, you know, like I don't have to come a, a part of like somebody else's project that I really don't like, but I need the money or I need the experience. Um, I like having the creative control, you know, like I, I like having the ability to be able to show like what I can do um, with that. So you, you just have more freedom, I feel, Um and it's just, it's fun. And it's it's fun when you're able to like create with your friends. Like when we start, when I started, I was literally making films with my friends. So um, there's stuff that, you know, different audiences will like over the other, but yeah, I, I love it, honestly. So make your stuff, make your own stuff. Don't be afraid to, don't think you don't have the money or the resources, get your phone, set it up. Like you just never know when this, in this industry and in this culture these days, like they are looking online all the time for content for actors, like they're looking. Um, so even if you have like seven views on something, like the sixth view could have been, you know, Issa. So you never know. Right. Got you. Um, can I can, go ahead? Can I, can I speak to what she just said real quick? And I'm I'm, I'm gonna just connect that to you, Romel. There was a I did a film. I really wanted to get my DP. I wanted to get in my DP director writer bag. So I wrote about a 12 page long script. I casted it myself. I had somebody do HMU. I uh, didn't have a gaffer. I just, I just understood that I had to shoot it a certain way. I shot it. I got it out there. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's called Sisters. And I did the promotion myself. So I, I wanted to know what the process was like. Tiffany made me think of this because she was talking about just being able to push your project. And so when you have good people around you, what's going to end up happening is that people like Romel, they see you on Instagram and you're promoting it. I don't know if you remember, bro, you sent me Sundance. Sundance collab, I think it was. And... It's the smaller stage of Sundance, but it's still Sundance. And that's pretty dope. And they accepted my submission. It was free. And there were two people that hit me up and said, hey, I remember you. I saw your film on uh, the Sundance collab website because people go on there and just look for stuff. And your film is in this huge repository where anybody's film can be found. And so had I not had the faith in God to write, direct, and produce, and edit Sisters, which is based off of a true story, right? A black vet, you know, who was killed in combat. And, but it's about these two sisters and how they have to make do with what they have. Created that, and I put it up and I was just promoting it. Ramel was like, hey, I see you, check this out. I didn't, I didn't even know about that. And so you have people just like throw you these freebies, low hanging fruit, throw your bone and I mean, for what it's worth, there's some exposure there. So just, I mean, thank you for saying that, Tiffany, because it brought me to that. And it brought me to, you know, just kind of giving you, you know, your flowers in terms of, you know, just seeing me and be like, hey, yo, I see you, that was, that was dope. Um, because honestly, if it's not, <laughs> not that, you know, I mean, everybody I start somewhere, but if it's not dope, chances are, you know, folks ain't gonna be like, hey, um, here goes this website or here goes this person, let me connect you, you know? But I mean, it was worthy enough, you know, because he was like, hey, Check this out. And I just thought that was dope. So thank you for that, bro. Yes, sir. I was good for that too. Like he got the keys to LA. Y'all don't even know. Facts. Like he literally has, facts. He's the mayor. Of facts, America. facts. This is big facts. Oh, stop it. Oh, stop. Uh, Zakia, I saw that you had your hand raised. You had a question, beloved? I did. Um. So everyone is has amazing stories and I am completely blessed to be in this room with y'all to hear what you have to say because I am writing so many notes 
But um, everyone keeps touching on having good people around you or having a supportive group of people. Um, me personally, I move around a lot, so I don't really have that poor group of people. How did you guys go about finding those people that you can trust with those concept moments or with those scripts that you don't really know like who you can trust with it? Um, how did you go about finding that group of people? Anybody, because everyone says that you have one. I think definitely, um, uh, Romel, was that two weeks ago where you, where you were talking about, um, we had the conversation uh, about meetings and following up with people? Yes, sir. Like two weeks, right? Um, I definitely think that that's one thing that will allow you to um, pretty much get the person's vibe and energy. If you're big on that, then I think that'll allow you to know, okay, I, I can, I know I can trust this person with or, or without, you know, this concept, this idea. I know that, you know, I can share this, this special idea with this person. Um, if you're, if, you know, if, if that's something that you're open to, I, I would say, you know, try, try in-person meetings or phone calls, Zooms, you know, just to, to to get that that vibe and understanding some people may they may want to do the uh, the concept or idea but they may not they may not uh, see it the same way that you do simply you know they may want to do it because it's a cool idea versus okay I really feel you know this this uh, I, I really feel passionate about this specific topic I, this is why I want to do it and I think we've all pro as creative, we probably come across people that just want to do a concept because it's a cool concept versus the the uh, the outcome, how it can inspire people, how it can touch someone, how it can uh, heal, you know, someone, you know. Um, I think hopefully that helps. Uh, if I can just sound off on that one, too. Um... I found out about, so it's funny because I knew AJ, but I didn't know him. Uh, mutual friends, a uh, good friend of mine uh, was doing some dance stuff. AJ had shot it. And I was seeing his name because he was tagging it. So tagging is important on social media and just giving credit to where credit is due. And then through AJ, I saw Romel's work because AJ was the DP behind the stuff. Started off with, I want to say it was High Yellow was the first one I saw. Then I just went down this rabbit hole of the universe of Romel Rose. And yeah, America's Pitbull uh, because of the internet. And I enjoyed him. I, I, I call my wife. I say, yo, look at this dude, man. Check him out. You know, and this is before I did my first. I was filmmaking, but I wasn't making my own films. I was on other people's projects, writing for people, ghostwriting, producing, and so on and so forth. And AJ inspired me uh, from the DP bag. I said, man, I, I got to get my, I got to get my weight up. Ramel inspired me because he could write. He has an imagination and he writes true to life. And so I started doing that. And I saw him. We went to Judge Maybelline's. I saw Ramel, that is. We went to Judge Maybelline's. My wife and I went, we were invited to Judge Maybelline's. Hey, that's a that's funny. I was literally there this past weekend on Sunday for, for the Father's Day joint. We my oh, dad yeah. was every year, but I thought about you. I was just saying that. I, I, <laughs> and his his dad is Father's Day, right? Like his dad was honored. This is about maybe like five years ago. His dad was honored, and I was already praying in my spirit that I want to work with Ramel Rose, and it manifested, right? Like I spoke to my Lord and Savior, and it happened. You know, uh, these people are stars. They, they don't have to have a physical star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but um, Adrian Martin is a star. You know what I'm saying? Like, that brother got it. Um, Ramel Rose is a star. And I was like, yeah, I want to work with them. Like, these are going to be my brothers. I wrote that down. I manifested that. And when they saw me, I feel like they felt the same about me. It was like, hey, yo, Chuck, come do this. And we're lending and borrowing each other's, like, cameras and gear. And, I mean, we're deep in the project back together, and here we are doing another project. So... Uh, to answer your question, my sister, yeah, like be intentional about who you want to work with, be intentional about why you want to work with them, and definitely be intentional about 
the, the, the stylistic type of projects you want to make. When I saw Ramel stuff, I was like, dang, like, I think I cried on two of them. And the other ones that, you know, <laughs> they, they're always, if Ramel is in it, you're going to laugh. And I'm just like, looking at this, I was like, look at this dude. He is such a clown. And that's what made me fall in love with the spirit. I was just like, yeah, this is the kind of stuff I want to do, if not act and direct. And so it happened that way, you know, and come to find out, you know, that we all have crazy sense of humor. We get along great. And that's the kind of tribe that you should foster. That's the kind of tribe that if you don't have, you should pray for. I guarantee you it will come to pass. Thank you. Wonderful. Anybody else have any questions? I know that that's not the only question we have here. I know we got some content creators, some uh, potential content creators um, working on some content and their projects and stuff like that. This is a segment where we will ask some questions, open up the floor. Chance, I know you got some questions. Go ahead. Um, 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 so what, obviously you guys, you guys do this for a living. So I feel like it, it's, it'll come easier to you, but for me, I want to create content, but the content I want to create, I want it to be original and I want to showcase like me acting, but obviously I said, I want it to be original. It's not, it doesn't come off as easy for me to think of, um, oh, this will be clever. This will be funny. This will be really good for me to showcase my skills. Like, how do you guys think of concepts and you know, illustrate them. Like, how do you like what? What, what is your what is your mind coming from, or where, what what do you, what type of place do you put yourselves in in order to come up with uh some type of content? Mm. For me, um, I try to go. I try to go within. Honestly, uh, I try to go within in regards to conceptually. I write down my dreams. I write down my nightmares, um, and I try to create stories based off of that, you know, or real life events, um, um, real life stories from family or friends, of course, with their, their, uh, approval. <laughs> um, I try to, to really conceptualize things that hit home for people and that are real as far as like topics and subject matters. I feel like doing that, it usually, it, it brings people in because they could connect to it. They understand. They see themselves in a the sense. Now, I do want to say, uh, Chance, this is my first time. I didn't get a chance to meet you at uh, your performance at um, Tough Crowd. But you did a great, man, you did a great job that that ending with the, the father scene. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, hey. I don't know if that's on video, but I would love for everybody on here to see that. But you killed it, man. You damn, you had me crying. So you, you did a great job, bro. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm trying to, the chance is, he's next level, man. He's talented. He's like 6'4". He got the league. Got it. He got everything he need. You know, I, I, I met, what was that, yesterday we met? I said, chance, bro. So like, what's up, bro? Like, Made me want to stand on my tippy toes, man. But nah, Chance is definitely talented. You killed the performance, as you already know. And um, yeah, he's creating content. He's he's he has a bunch of different ideas. So we got to keep our our hands on his brother, man, because he's you know got to protect him at all costs for sure. Um, could I could I get your um? Can I get something for you as well, Charles? Please. Absolutely, brother. Um. Can you restate the question again, please? Like, where do you put yourself? Like, what? How? Where do you? Where's your mind at? How do you? Where do you put yourself when you're um trying to come up with content or come up with concepts or ideas to create something? Okay, beautiful question. I Martin Scorsese said something about writing what you know. John Singleton said, "Damn it, pick up a camera and shoot it." And so marrying those two together, I think you have you have a film, you got something. Uh, doesn't matter how underdeveloped or how developed it is, you have something. I think starting there is gonna give you the benchmark for yourself. And then you'll find that zeal for 
how good or how well you think you can do the thing, whatever the thing is. You're always going to do one thing better than the next. Uh, I feel like, I really feel like, and, I'm, and I want to use the folks in the room, so I'm going to use Romel. I feel like, I don't know, with, with AJ, I'm not sure what he does greater than the next because he's a great vocalist, he's a great songwriter, but he's an excellent DP. He's just one of them ones. Like So it's just kind of like everybody doesn't get a chance to do that. Jordan Peele is a cool actor, but he's, a, he's an even better writer. And that lends himself to being a great director. So if you wrote it, you know how to direct it. A great writer is going to be a great director, more times than not. Uh, Ramel, he's a great actor. He's an excellent director. And he really doesn't play. He means business when he's on set. And so for me, and hopefully this answers your question, I don't, I don't subject myself to trying to just like do one thing. I want to make sure that I'm mastering. And Tiffany spoke to this, you know, um, I feel like I'm more cast to commercial wise and I'm really trying to find, I'm really trying to get, you know, by God's grace, I am going to get my footing theatrically when it comes to film. Some people say pay dues. Other people just get there, snap of a finger. For other people, the process happens overnight. Overnight can be 10 years. You know, Sam Jackson didn't really fully get on until he was in his forties. Same thing with Morgan Freeman, you know, um, Oprah's biggest break came after she was, you know, well into her late 20s, 30s. And so I just, I don't have, I don't have, whatever it is that I'm called to do and do that thing, I want to make sure I'm doing it to the best of my ability. I have more of a passion over writing and directing and producing to act because not a whole lot of people that look like me in front of the screen to tell these types of stories, not to joke, right? Like there's comedy, not to, but to actually bring about real drama for African boys who look like me. And so that's where I feel like I'm called to. And I feel like your question comes from that. And through that, I feel like that's where you're gonna find what you're most passionate about. Do, do you really care about being seen on screen or do you care about writing it and getting with some dope casting directors to actually cast a person who is going to represent the person it is that you wrote to be seen on screen to change somebody's life? That's really what it's all about, the story. The story is supposed to help and uplift and propel to change somebody's life, or else it's not gonna be written. I listen to AJ's music all the time. You know, we, 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 we're we casting it in Culture Shock and I'm just like, this music, I, <laughs> I feel it, it touches me, or else I'm not gonna use it, it's not gonna be scored. You know, the same thing goes for score, goes for visual. Same thing goes for visual, goes for the intellectual property of writing. I think, I feel like they go hand in hand. So once you find that bag, and like I said, earlier at the top of what I was saying, you may be good at all three, like an AJ or like a Tiffany or a Ramel, but everybody's not going to do that. Chances are, like I know for me, I do one thing greater than those things. And I feel like I'm a better actor than I am director. Somebody's going to direct me to great acting, right? And so through that, you'll, you'll, you'll get in your bag, you'll find your rain man, you'll, you'll find yourself. And that's when you go and get in that creative flow of who you are as a filmmaker, whether that's writing, directing, producing, acting, or being a DP, whatever you lend yourself to. You're going to do one of those things greater than the next. If not, you're going to be honing your craft parallel across all of those areas. I, I want to speak gotcha. to that really quickly. Um, you know, one of the rules that I live by creatively is um, make what you want to see. So a lot of times, you know, especially our stories, there there are a lot of our stories that aren't told. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up in Norwalk, Long Beach area. I'm not seeing a lot of stories being told about where I came from. So I want to see that, you know, and I, who better to tell that story than myself? You know what I mean? So I started off small. Like I, I see a lot of people who have these ideas of content creation and, you know, they write these grandiose stories, but you know, the first film that me and AJ made was a was a very small, short film. I just put it in the chat. It's called America's Pitbull. And the concept was I draw inspiration from anything. I saw a film called Fruitvale Station. And there was a there was a scene in this in this movie that really stuck with me because I didn't understand it when I first saw it. I, you know, it's it's the film where Oscar is at the gas station, he befriends a pit bull. And it's like 
he sees the dog, he goes up to it, he bonds with the dog, and then he goes to put gas in his car, and then the dog gets hit by a car, and he runs over to the dog, and he starts, like, crying and yelling, like, help, help, and the dog dies in his arm, and I didn't understand why that scene was in the movie. It kind of confused me, but I watched the interview of the filmmaker and the filmmaker is so brilliant. He was, and this is before Ryan Coogler was even famous, but he was talking about the foreshadowing of that scene and how that scene was symbolic in foreshadowing what's going to happen to the main character at the end of the story. And it was symbolic of how young black men are treated in America. You know, we are America's pit bull. We're often, labeled as violent, vicious, inhumane, and left to die in the street. And I thought that was deep. Like, that just gave me the chills right now. I was like, what the hell? Like, who thinks like that? I didn't, I wouldn't have got that from that scene on the first, on the first watch. So that inspired me. I was like, damn, America's pit bull. That's an interesting concept. Now I have a concept in my mind. And I was like, well, I want to give my version of what that means to me. You know, I thought it was interesting to play on the idea of, you know, if I wear a hoodie and I go out in the street, I'm seen as a thug or violent, vicious, inhumane. But if I put on a suit or I, if I put on a on a on a marine uniform, I'm respected. I'm dignified. I'm this. I'm you get a you get people react to you or they respond to you differently based on your attire as a black man. So my brother at the time was a marine. You know he had just had a child. So I played with the concept. I thought of a story. I hit up Adrian because he makes similar content that that resembles the type of content that I'm trying to make so I remember I'll never forget I hit up Adrian we met at a Denny's in Hollywood I don't know if you remember this we met at Denny's in Hollywood bro and I was like yeah man I really like your work I have this idea you know I don't know I've never done anything before but like I know how to tell a story I have this idea about like you know this idea of like America's pit bull you know I had it in my mind. I saw it in my mind. Okay, he's going to be wearing a hoodie. He's going to be doing this. He's going to be doing that. And by the end, we're going to show him like that. And Adrian was like, okay, I get it. Let's do it. Like he understood the vision. So when we get on set, which is my mama house, and I told my little brother, we I didn't know anything about filmmaking, but we got together, we shot it, we told the story, we put it out, and it got a really good response from people so it gave me the confidence to continue to create content and create content so but we started off small right the film is like five minutes you know very short to the point casted my little brother casted my nephew at the time he was a newborn now he's eight years old and a basketball savant you know what i'm saying but it's just i like to encourage people to start off small and then grow and grow and then we did the next one high yellow where there was more production value that was added because now we have dialogue. The first film, it was no dialogue. We got, we actually shot it like a music video, but it wasn't. It was just a film with no words, right? And I learned that style from my acting class. Like that's kind of like a style that I've in inherited just by being in acting class and training as an actor. So, um, you know, we, we did the project and you want to start small because now the second the second project now we have dialogue now we we're dealing with recording the dot so i had to hire a sound recordist i had to feed the crew members i had to hire actors i had to put together that was my first set where it was a little overwhelming but i took the mistakes that i made from that experience then we made i think after that was save me and then we make spirit of injustice then we make John and we just kept getting better and better as we went. But at first we didn't really know. I didn't know what I was doing. And you kind of learn as you go, but you want to start off small. You don't want to start off with these big ideas or you figure out how to take your big idea and turn it into a smaller idea so that you can actually get it done and not just sit on projects and sit on ideas. If that makes sense. I saw somebody had their hand raised. Am I tripping? Was that you, Zakia? It was Jasmine, but she's not oh. in here. Okay, cool. Anybody have any other questions? We got about 10 more minutes before we close out. Uh, yeah, I had a question. Um, so how do y'all go about budgeting? Like um, how much money do y'all put of your own, like from your savings account or how much do you, or 
or do y'all go funding or ask for funding or ask for favors from your friends? Like, how is that process uh, with y'all y'all short films? I think we're amazing. I think we're amazing. <laughs> yeah, I actually yeah, have, I actually a, have a, a crowdfunding guide that um, you could take heed to if you're interested. But basically, the first couple, well, the first film, it was, I, I didn't even know what a budget was. I'll never forget when I met <laughs> Ryan Kluger. It's, it's, it's embarrassing because like when I was talking to him, I was telling him all these ideas that I had. And then I was like, yo, I got this idea that's inspired by Fruitville Station. You know, I want to shoot it like this, shoot it like that. He was like, all right, cool. He was like, what's your budget? And I was like, what the hell does that mean? What do you mean? Like, I just have these ideas. I didn't know that, I didn't know what, a, I didn't know you actually needed a budget. So the first film we shot, we just put together for no money. And then High Yellow, the second film, I, I was working a job and I saved money. I think I saved a couple thousand to feed people and to pay the people that I could at the time. And then when it came to trying to be competitive in the market, you know, I had to utilize crowdfunding resources. So with crowdfunding, um, you know, there's different ways you can go about it. If you have an investor to come in and wants to spend money on the film, it just needs to be a distribution plan on how to get that money back because most people, unless it's donations, they're going to be expecting their return on their investment. The cool thing about crowdfunding is no one is expecting their money back. They're just expecting a product. They're expecting a film. So you can utilize different crowdfunding resources. Tiffany can also speak to that as well because I know she did some crowdfunding. I'll throw it to her. But for me, at the time, I used Indiegogo where there's a difference between fixed in flexible funding. Fixed funding means you, let's say you have a goal of 10K for a short film. If you're raising all this money, you're raising money. Fixed funding means you have to hit a certain amount. You have to either hit the goal or hit close to the goal in order to keep the money. You know, a lot of filmmakers like to utilize this, this concept because, you know, sometimes it's like, yo, this project, I can't make it for less than this. So if I don't raise this amount of money, I'm going to just give you all your money back because I can't make it for less than 10K. Now, flexible funding is, which this is why I use Indiegogo because it allows you to, okay, let's say I have a goal of 10K and I only, I only raise 5K, right? I'm able to keep those funds and utilize them for maybe pre-production or post-production. And then I might have to do another campaign or whatever your crowdfunding strategy is, but you do need to have a crowdfunding strategy. You need to be very specific on the amount of money that you need. That's why it's important to do a budget breakdown. If you want to hire a line producer to break down the numbers for you, figure out what number you need. And you also need to always play know, you also need to know where the money is going and explain why you need this $10,000. Okay. You need to explain, you need to do a pitch video explaining to these people, okay, I need money. Be I need 10,000 because I need to hire 10 crew members at 150 a day and we're shooting for three days. So if I have just doing some loose numbers, if I have 10 crew members for 150 a day and we're doing a two day shoot. So that's 150 times 10. That's well, hold on. 150 times 10, that's 1500 times a three day. Well, I don't know. I'm not, a, you get what I'm saying. You got to break down the numbers and figure out why you need this money, how much money you actually need and where it's going. You know what I'm saying? So you need to have all that planned out before you start asking people for money. That's how you actually see success because you got to break down the actual mathematical components. You can't just come out and be like, all right, I need 10,000 and just post it on Instagram that's what most people do. They're just like, oh, I need this amount of money. And they post it on their timeline and expect people to start donating. But there's a whole strategy that you need to do. You need to break down the numbers, the why you need this, the where the money is going. And then you actually need to do personal reach outs to people daily. You got to treat it like a nine to five job. You have to treat it like an actual presidential campaign. You know how the president goes around shaking hand, kissing babies. You're going to have to do that in order to raise the amount of funds that you need in order to get your project done. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Perfect. Tiffany, you want to speak to that since you just came off of the heels of that? 
Yeah, well, I want to speak to starting where you are first, because for my first few projects, I funded everything myself. Um, I paid the first one that I did. I paid uh, my friend to shoot and edit it. I paid him like eight hundred dollars um, to do that. And I was like, all I put in is and then made sure everybody ate like I I wrote a script that would fit into like my locations, like for for Romel with his first projects um America's Pitbull he did at his at his mom's house <laughs> you know and use the car that they had like you know what I mean so you start with like the resources that you have around you you write something that is easy to shoot that won't cost anything that won't be super costly you figure out how you're going to feed people for you know dedicating their time um I was very honest like with anybody that was a part of it like yo I cannot pay you <laughs> for this I could feed you I'm only going to keep you for a day like you just make it within your sphere so that it's not overwhelming. Like the the bigger projects, you know, as you continue to to get comfortable, you know, like for Romel, like the next project he did, it went a step above what he did before. So you start where you are um, and use the resources that you have available to you. And, you know, just be honest with what you have. Some people will just want the experience and just want to shoot something. Um, or if you shoot yourself, you know, like whatever it is, um, just start with where you are and then you can build up to the to the bigger crowd uh, funding things. I haven't really like crowd funded fully. I think um, for the end of 30, I, you know, that was like my first time, like really like asking people like, yo, I need this money. And then two days later, I had the double the amount I was even asking for. Um but I got creative. I, I did a book signing to raise money. <laughs> like I sold my books. Um, so if you have things that you sell or things that you do, you can put all of that towards it. Um, I asked my mama. I asked <laughs> my parents, you know, people to to invest in me um, as well. You know, you want to try. I try to avoid crowdfunding as much as possible um, because it's taxing. And like Romel was saying, it's, it's a full time job, you know, to get people to to donate. Um, but I, I'm a strong believer that, you know, if you have something that's intentional and worthwhile, like the money will come. Um, so, yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Can, can I speak to what you just said real quick? There, there, there's a uh, there's this notion that once you're done with the film and putting it out, um, you made it for yourself. Well, if you made it for yourself, you 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 could have just kept it. And that's always easy, too. It's not as taxing. But I love what she just said. Like, don't be afraid to ask for money. We were just talking about this last night. Like, say, hey, look, I need this much. All they can do is tell you no. Like, that's the worst that can happen. They can just, That's all that's going to happen. Film festivals are very expensive. I found that out um, with Sisters because I was like, okay, how do I promote this? Because there's like the four Ps in marketing, right? Product, price, place, and promotion. You have the product, which is a film, the price, depending on, you know, what the budget was for it or chances are you didn't get paid for it because you created it. Um, uh, the place, right? It's either going to take place on Vimeo, YouTube, or you're going to take it to a film festival. Film festivals cost money. They're very expensive and they can add up. They're free ones, but those aren't like the best ones, right? The ones that really cost is a lottery as to how they pick you and you may or may not get chosen. And then uh, promotion. How do you go about promoting? What methods do you go about prom promoting it? I don't believe in spamming Instagram or TikTok to let people watch your stuff. I do, however, believe in screening it and somehow getting in touch, right? Like, cause I work at the institution. So uh, like Cal State's, a lot of these places like uh, junior colleges, like they have platforms and mediums where you can actually, you know, uh, uh, garner people to come and watch your film and like put it in the school as, you know, to be screened or ask somebody for an in-kind service that say, hey, look, I have this thing out. Like, can you, can we squeeze it in there? This is how much I got, or I don't have any money at all. That's the best or the worst you can do is that they, they can say no. Um, yeah, there was something else I wanted to say, but I really love that you know you did speak to that, uh, Tiffany, because once you create it, you, you're creating it for someone. Even if you create it for millions of people and 999,999 9, people uh, don't watch it, but one person does, that's a difference maker because it was just you and your thought at that point, you know, but if you push it and put it out, you never know what can come of that. You just never know. All right. Thank you.
put stuff in perspective for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, we got time for one more question before we close out. Anybody want to take it on? Going once, going twice. I got one. So, oh, where where are you guys going to start as far as you know, just with the information that you got today? How how would you guys um you know start your either your first or one of your next um projects? I don't know who said that, but I don't know who said that, but whoever said um make what you want to see, that just I don't know. That is that is I don't know. It just flipped like a switch in my head. It made me come up with a million ideas and make me uh just i don't know whatever i don't even know what i i don't even know where, where that inspiration i don't i don't know what i'm trying to say but that really inspired me to just be able to um create and i really feel like i could put a lot more things in perspective and i could be very more specific specific and direct onto what i want to see and um what i want to create and post and promote whoever said that appreciate that Yes, sir. Yeah, that was Romel that said that. Uh, I'm tripping. Thank you, Romel. My bad. My bad. Thank hey, you. Man. It wasn't me. It was the man above. You know, all praise is due to him. You know, what does it mean? It's never me. It's always we. Hello. Come on. But anyway, um, <laughs> I appreciate each and every one of you for pulling up. Um, oh, this- hey. Real quick, um, this is actually what I what I said. I was like Tiffany inspired this. Ask people to do do things for free. If you ain't got the bread, and which most of us don't, ask them to do it for free. Ask them to direct, gaff, shoot for free. The worst they can tell you is no. That's what I wanted to say. You inspired that, Tiffany, because honestly, that's how we've kind of been doing our projects. But the one thing I again, more flowers for you, Ramel. Everybody came on John free. But at the end, and I use this method now, at the end, everybody got a little, you know, a little something, something. You know, make sure everybody get a little something, you know, aside from, oh, here goes 150 bucks, 200 bucks, or whatever the case may be. It goes a long way. It's like, man, like, I wouldn't expect that. It was for the free, but he's just like, hey, I just zelled you, whatever the case may be. But ask people to do things for free. Tell them you want it free. Change your name to free. Free, not like for the free, for the low. For nothing. Ask them to do it for free. You'll be surprised. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Ravel, I was going to ask answer um, Adrian's question. Go ahead. Uh, yes, so I'm already working on two other projects, but honestly, um, during this Zoom session, um, this has inspired me, especially with um, Charles talking about him being first generation because I'm first generation as well from my Sierra Leonean background. You know, also, I went to CSUN too, eh? <laughs> but um, it actually inspired me um, to write um, a short film about my um, first, me being a first generation Sierra Leonean out here and how it's like the in-between of not being Black enough for Americans, but not being African enough for your African folks, you know, so appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Camille, how are you? Just feel compelled to check on you right now. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just taking notes. So my whole little notepad over here is suffering. Um, But yeah, no, um, this kind of inspired me as well, you know, to even get into the film creation as well. i I'm a songwriter. I can write songs. Why not, you know, write films? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think it'd be awesome for me. And then also just hearing your, all the good feedback and, you know, what the filmmaking has done for you guys. It's inspiring. So, yeah, I was quiet, but I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, and um, I'm super excited for you specifically because you're very talented and um, I just want to make sure that everybody here we stay connected we stay um, you know we, we we stay in each other's circle you know what I mean because everybody here is, is extremely talented everyone here is at different levels 
of their career, but you know, you never know where somebody's gonna be in three years. You never know where somebody's gonna be next year. You know what I'm saying? So um I'm super inspired by everybody who's coming to this program. Um I see people have dropped their social media in the chat. Please do so. Please follow each other. Please connect with each other. If you guys are in the same city, get some coffee, you know, get some lunch, do something. You know what I mean? Make sure that we are not just, you know, following each other and connecting with here, but we're actually following up and bringing this stuff into reality. Um, continue to stay connected, update each other on what's going on. Um, I know we have our group chat. We'll stay in touch. Uh, before we close out or as we close out, as we're putting our uh, social medias in the chat, I kind of want Adrian and Charles to briefly speak on, you know, some projects that they have coming up because what I've been trying to do is I'm like, my thing, I'm in the process of improving the program. So I'm very appreciative of everybody who showed up. This means a lot to me because, you know, it matters. Like not only are we, are continuously creating, but I want to give the information that we're learning and that we're accumulating to other creatives. That's what it's about. There's so many people in this industry who don't share knowledge and don't share resources. So my whole goal is to um, bridge that gap and create a new paradigm where, you know, we're really, as we come in the door, we're, we're leaving the door open for other creatives to come in and learn exactly what we're learning, do exactly what we're doing. There's not enough of that as far as black people in the entertainment industry, in Hollywood, and all these creative spaces. So um, just to see you guys being here and taking it seriously, taking notes, like it really does mean a lot. Um, and also, like I said, I want them to, oh, that's what I was going to say. I've been trying to figure out, you know, I know that we're giving knowledge, we're giving resources, and we're um, sharing information, you know, in this program, but I've been trying to figure out how do I actually create opportunities for people. And I think that this is an opportunity for me to connect people who can actually, other than myself, actually create opportunities like Charles, Adrian, myself, we are actually in development for a project. So I want to connect actors in my cohort with filmmakers, with producers who are actually doing things because, you know, we might be casting soon. So, you know, I want you guys to connect and to, you know, be updated with each other, follow each other on social media, because when those casting calls come out, I want you guys to be the first people that they go to. You know what I mean? I want to be able to not only provide knowledge and resources, I want to provide opportunities. I want to, I want us to really start doing stuff and, you know, really connecting and really taking things to the next level and building a tribe in this community. So um, I know Ajima has her hand raised. So right after she addresses what she wants to address, I want Adrian and Charles to speak on some of the projects that, and opportunities that they have coming up. Go ahead, Ajima. Uh, I was actually going to ask, do you mind if I plug real quick my business? Absolutely. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so um, as Ramel knows, um, I think Adrian does too. Um, I'm creating my own business. Um, it's my first own business um, where I'm making it, I'm making an easier access for creatives to have easier access to people in production to make their projects become more tangible. So if you are a producer, writer, director, editor, colorist, um, gaffer, hair, makeup artist, et cetera, et cetera, um, I'm making a website um, which easier access to these people where you have their websites, their um, rate of pay, if they're willing to work with people on a budget, if they're willing to work and collab with people and how willing they are willing to travel to said production sets or whatever. And if they come with a production company or not. Um, so um, I am adding into the group message, a link to this form. And this form basically just gets to you, like if you are a part of production or if, even if you know someone, you can send that link to them as well. And it has them fill out the form for me to finish creating my website. So then I can put it out there. So everyone has easier access to set people in productions. Amazing idea. Love it. Thank you. I'm trying That's to make this money, girl, so I can pay for all the bills. Absolutely. Make sure y'all connect with the queen. You know, she definitely put in that database, which is going to be crucial for us as creatives and us to get our stuff done Um, and just have access to resources. So it's like, it's no more, she's kind of bridging that gap of like, okay, how do I find crew members? How do I do this? How do that? Boom. We have a database. We have resources. You know, we're building that out. 
So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for putting that together. I'm super excited for it to all come to fruition for you. So thank you again. And I'll pass the rock to Charles and Adrian uh, as we close out. You go first, Aiden. Uh, you want to tell them about the uh, project? By the way, I just sent you the final draft. I sent that to you and Romel. I don't know if you want to talk Obviously, you're the, you know, extraordinaire when it comes to the singing and dancing. Uh, we want to hear it all, brother. Come on. No, hey, I tell you, don't leave nothing, bro. Don't leave nothing all, you know, off the table. Come on. Uh, Kaji, um, you wait. You want to know like the concepts of the stuff we're working on, or what we're working on exactly? What was the question? My bad. I want to know the concept. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted you to speak to the projects that you're in development with, just for you know to put people plant the seed and put it on the radar of people looking for opportunities. Like we do have some opportunities coming up. Um, we're in development for some projects, and also the other stuff that you're doing as well. Anything that you kind of want to plug and you know you want to put out there for possible collaborators, possible actors, possible crew members, all of that stuff. Got you. All right. So there are two um, uh, projects that are in pre-production. One, uh, me, Charles, and Romel are creating. The concept is pretty much, in short, um, a world where Black people are <laughs> um, slave masters and, and white people are slaves. Um, it's not... It's not that specific, but it's it's that. Um, so it's going to be very powerful. Uh, we're in a process of writing and casting all, in, for that now. Uh, another project I'm working on is, long story short, some of you guys might not know this, but I had went to jail in 2018 for something that I didn't do. Um, and I'm creating a story off of that. That's in the process of, the writing process is, um, has already started so we're getting close to creating i mean to finishing that script with uh my brother rainy and uh randy bonds uh and i also have a film that's uh going to essence fest too i don't know if i'm gonna be there but i because i just came back from new orleans so hopefully I, I, they'll probably back. Uh, just go back Bro, <laughs> i might have to be beat us out there <laughs> Metal charles y'all just need to pull up so, yeah, no, for real. So, yeah. Didn't you just come back from New Orleans, Adrian? I did, yeah. I had a family reunion out there. <laughs> Maybe you got back. So your family out back, right? <laughs> I was back out there. Uh, I just got it's it. Just for a couple up. days. Huh? Just for a couple of days. At least Friday yeah, yeah. and Saturday so you can see our films and we can see yours. That's right, Tiffany. Yeah. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try my best to, to, to make that happen. Um, but yeah, outside of that, um, um, yeah, that, that's my main focus right now, just those two films and the current film that is circulating. Right. Those, it's called Black Terror. If you if I don't make it and you guys see it, then that's that's well, what you need the screen information. What day is it? I don't know yet. Uh I actually just asked the the um I just asked the uh uh executive producers for that information. I just found out last week. So is it is it with Nia? Yeah. You know okay, you, I know Nia. Yeah, that's my sis. Um, no, no, you, guys, you, know, you know what day it is? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's on the final day of of you guys are closing Sunday. The, ceremony, the ceremony. So you're on Sunday. Sunday Ooh. what? What day? <laughs> what do you mean sun next Sunday? Oh, no, next Sunday. Third, or no, the second. Third, the second, yeah. Sunday, got it, got it. Okay, okay. I I, I want to say I heard that in 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 um conversation, but wait, I, wasn't I, that just an ABFF too? It was at Can. And yeah, y'all was they was out there. Yeah, so God willing, I'm out there. But yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. If if and even if you guys you know that are out here or will be coming out here, if you guys ever need some help with with work or anything, if I'm if I'm able to assist, please let me know. So, um, AJ, do you have a a director for that 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 jail piece? I mean. Let's I plug. <laughs> Not necessarily. I, mean, I was going to direct it, but come on, bro. You already know. Hey, man. However, I'm. I, I, if I could pick up trash on the set, brother, let me know. I. I just want to. Yeah. I just want to be a part. You know of what I'm it. talking about y'all. That's just how we get down. See, um, I'm. See, I'm worse than Romel. 
<laughs> I'm worse than Romel. I'm not gonna ask. I'm just be like, look, bro, I'm I'm producing on it, whether you <laughs> accept or not. <laughs> hey, I accept. I I accept it, bro. Yeah, I feel emotionally invested in it because I remember when that happened, bro. I was like, I was appalled because like we were all like, it, we were all creeped out because we was like, yo, who is everybody was calling each other like, have y'all heard from Adrian? Like we hadn't heard from you, bro. It was like a very emotional experience, and I feel connected to that story for sure. So, yeah, yeah, let's definitely get that rolling, man. Uh, however, I could be involved. You already know, you know. That's, that's the um, but yeah, I, you know, I kind of want to talk, want you to talk about your photography too. Like you do, don't you do headshots? You do all of that type of stuff. Like where can people find your yeah, work? I'll be, I'll be forgetting sometimes. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do photography too. So if y'all need just content, headshots, um, conceptual, you know, editorial lifestyle, you know, all that, um, I'm, I'm able to do that as well. So yeah, if Absolutely. you guys need that, let me know. I think you you put your Instagram up there for both of them, right? He's it's Adrian uh, J Photo, and then yeah, I did both. It's his personal year, so yeah. you got him up there too. All right, Charles, go ahead, brother. Um, uh, actively getting callbacks. I have a Volvo commercial that's coming out. Um, I don't know if it's aired or not. I want to say it's aired because they paid me for it. They don't pay you until it airs. Um. And there's another commercial coming out that I just did. Otherwise, there's this project with MJ actively uh, shooting. You said what? I said, let's go. So I'm just like, oh, yeah, thanks, bro. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. So Culture Shocked, Culture Shocked, OTW, Culture Shocked, and actively looking for my melanated people to, collaborate with, uh, whether that's producing, writing. I'm actually structuring a writer's room for Culture Shot, uh, looking for a showrunner. You know, I don't know how busy you are, Tiffany, but, you know, you know, hey, you know, I'm I'm always, you know, looking to collaborate, you know, with, 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 with our folks, you know what I mean? And so as of lately, I've been working with a, di a diverse group of people. So there's that. Um, really looking forward to this project that AJ is about to birth. Um, I think it's going to be everything. I feel like he undersold it to you guys, and he's not really giving himself his just due on that. Uh, Ramel is going to be like the super producer on that. Um, I'm writing it. I'm also going to be producing on it, but it's going to be everything. And we are actively right now looking for um, crew for that. So please tap in with us on that. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm just looking to work with you guys. Like, what do you guys got going on? You know, um, hit me. I, I mean, is it writing concepts? Is it, you know, do you need a writer so that you can just focus on this? Uh, do you need a producer? Do you need a director? You know, um, actively doing that. Otherwise, just working with students at the university and collaborating and, you know, touching bases across, uh, bridging a gap, if I can say. So just connecting different people to different people. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to working with you guys for whatever it's worth. And I'm going to drop my email in here, too, so y'all can tap in. Yes, sir. Chance, I saw you had a question. Thank you for sharing, uh, Charles. Appreciate that. Chance, you got a question? I had a few questions. Uh, the first one is, Adrian, how how or all of your uh, Charles, Romel, and Adrian's film, when are y'all going to post about it when y'all are looking for a uh, cast or y'all? looking for auditions y'all gonna post about it like when, when, when is that gonna be known about definitely gonna post about it you'll be one of the first people to know my brother you thought you was getting away <laughs> second, second, <laughs> second, uh, second question was it's just um i was just having a conversation with somebody earlier and i kind of took um when you said something charles made me want to ask y'all this question it's not like a very uh question that i'm like i need to know but like this is a question for all the actors in here what do you guys think is better to be to to film something and it to be cut, but for you guys to get paid or for you not to get paid, but the thing still airs? What would you guys prefer for all the actors in here? I like you said part that you said you said for it to get cut. Would you rather you, you you film something very major and you get paid for it, but it gets cut, or would you rather you not get paid for something and but you're in front of the camera and it's a very major, a lot of exposure? What would you guys prefer? Man, that's a good one. AJ, what's up? I don't know if you want to. 
the first, yeah. the first the first thing that I thought of is sometimes um opportunities might not come in the form of monetary gain, right? Mm. So you got to be able to discern, and that's why programs and knowledge is important, right? Like with with hopefully. with this type of information that you're getting, I can say my job is, I'm well pleased with my job if you're able to leave from it, able to make wiser decisions than you previously um, were doing, right? So with this type of information that we're giving you, with this type of information, we're basically giving you our experience. Our goal is to deposit it into you so that you can have and move with wisdom versus just not knowing what you're doing. So as you gain more experience, because the best teacher is experience, right? So as you gain experience in this industry, you will be able to discern opportunities that present themselves. For example, when me and Adrian connected, there was no money, but there was opportunity there. When Charles hit me up asking me, hey, I'm look, I want to work with you, right? I didn't have any money to give him, but he saw me as an opportunity. So sometimes you have to recognize the opportunity versus the financial gain. But then at a certain point too, you get to, you work yourself in certain spaces and you get to a certain level. You don't want to undercut your value as well. So that's a game that you kind of have to continuously and you're going to continuously find balance with because sometimes it's like, all right, I might, you know, I might do this for free because I understand the opportunity that it presents. I understand the people who I'm going to be working with and the valuable relationships that can be gained from this. And sometimes social capital is better than actual money, right? Woo! So I say that because, you know, Tiffany will say something out of her mouth like, oh, Romel is the mayor of LA. He could connect. Like, I don't take any of that on because I just for me I understand the value of social capital I understand I put myself in certain situations that people either might know who I am or I may have done a favor and they might owe me in a way so I'll say hey I'll, I'll connect them with certain people and make certain relationships happen because I understand the value of relationships versus charging for a bag up front mm -hmm. hopefully that makes sense it does. It it's does. It's less about me being the mayor of something and more so about me understanding the value of relationships and knowing. Brother, how to... brother, stop that. You are still the mayor. You are still <laughs> the mayor. Yeah. Don't worry yourself. You man. are both. You are both. Okay. There you go. She said it. <laughs> hey, man. All praises due to God. Appreciate y'all. Hey, uh, a quick question. For, for the people in the back, I think they were wondering, Romel, what does social capital mean? So, social capital. I'm, nobody was wondering. I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> no, nah, I saw a good, great question, bro. If you don't understand, I love the thing I like about Chance is that if you don't understand something, he's gonna ask a question. He's like, "What does that mean?" Everyone's clapping. I'm not gonna clap. I don't understand. You know, I love that, bro. Um, social capital is, by definition, I'm looking up the definition. It says the networks of relationships among people who live and work in a particular society, enabling that society to function effectively. So in this context, right, social capital would be the relationships that you have within the industry, right? So I have a relationship with Charles and Adrian. I asked them to come on this platform and add value, right? So the social capital in the relationship is they were able to come on this platform and give valuable information and give valuable resources along with Tiffany, along with everyone else like who have, have experience and they're able to come and give it to us. So I have different relationships with people and I understand that relationships are important because especially in this entertainment industry, you can't just rely on your talent. Talent is just simply not good enough. No matter how talented you are, there is always going to be someone more talented or there are going to be somebody. There's a bunch of talented people. Everybody in the industry is talented. Everybody here is talented, you know? So what's going to separate you? Sometimes what might separate you is the relationship that you have. Adrian has a lot of relationships in his back pocket. You know, you, you heard in his bio, he has Tina Knowles. He has this, he has that. So he can sometimes be in certain spaces where he can bank on those relationships and get certain opportunities that other people might not have access to. So that's the idea behind social capital. It is the relationships that you have and 
what you can do with those relationships. But also knowing how to utilize those relationships. I can't say that I've I've mastered how to utilize my network just yet. So I'm still that's something I'm still personally um learning how to do. Right. I I I think I think when you're a good person at heart, like a Ramel or an AJ who is in the you know same room as you know Jay Z and Beyonce shooting mom's birthday for I don't know how many years, that gets you in the room. That's enough networking. When you're good to people, when you pay people, when you do have the money, when you praise people, when you um, assert yourself with people in the ways that you know they've done, that's your network. That's you networking. Networking is not, oh yeah, let's link. Give me your Instagram, give me your number. That's not networking. Networking, brother, and I, I disagree with you, AJ, is what you've been doing. It's, it's gotten you quite far. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And to the awesome point that Ramel was making earlier, um, there's not a disagreement, but I think it's both. To answer your question, Chance, um, whether it gets cut and you know, you're not seen, but you get paid for it, or you get on and it's seen and you get a bag for it. So I'm gonna say this, right? Like how many, like I my wife and I just bought our first first home a year and five months ago. It was actor money that bought this, right? It was the commercials. You know, there's a commercial that's not even released yet that I did with Lil Nas X. I didn't release it because at the time he was saying a lot of stuff about BET and so on and so forth. And, you know, um, it was a principle, the way the editor cut it, you know, you don't see a whole lot of me, you see a whole lot of Lil Nas X and a dope Nigerian Yoruba sister that did a commercial with me. But the whole cast was melanated. You got Lil Nas X, you got me, you got the Nigerian homegirl. And, you know, like... It was a it was my first residual and I'm SAG eligible because of that. And so, no, the world didn't see it. A few people saw it and they hit me about it, but it's not something that was like nationally. It was national, but it wasn't. I didn't put it up. You know what I mean? And everything is not for everybody. You don't always have to post everything. But look, on the low, quietly, I got the bag and I was able, able to open escrow on my home. And so I'm just saying that to the awesome point that Ramel was making but to add to it, I think it's both, you know, um, it just depends on who you are. You know, the power of relativity, like Albert Einstein said, it just depends on who you are and where you at. It's not always about, you know, where you're from, it's where you're at and using what you have in your hands, you know, just using what it is you got. If you think you have little, but you have a straw or a rod, as Moses had in the Bible, man, use that, you know, signs, miracles, and wonders can happen just with that rod in your hand. But when you got a personality like these brothers right here, it can get you in a room with a Jay Z and Beyonce without having to ask for anything. So, yeah. So, oh, um, Tiffany, did you want to plug any? Well, I saw. Did somebody else have the uh the hand up? Did Zakia have her hand up, or am I tripping? I did. I didn't know if he was asking like everybody in the room or like just our panelists. So nah, exactly. if you got some, if you got something to add, you know, this is a this is a ebb and flow conversation. Okay. Um. Well, I have noticed just in my life that favor lasts a long time. So if you are just good to people, like you said, you're good to people. Um. You're constantly like just giving all the time it'll come back to you so I find you I feel like um I have one example like okay I did um love is for the own network and I was I did background for that and I met one of the actors on set and um got to talk to him about some of his own personal projects he had going on Outside of that, we connected and I was able to do makeup on some of his sets. I got some lines on some of his sets and was able to meet his DP who introduced me to another woman who was from LA. I don't know how LA keeps coming up I'm in Atlanta, but uh, I met this woman from LA and she helped me. Um, well, actually I helped her. She, she had me work with her on a um, campaign for the Super Bowl when it was here in Atlanta. And then from there, um, she called me again when she was back in Atlanta and asked me to work with her on a documentary between, um, it was a guy who was making a documentary on the difference between hip hop here in 
um, the U.S. and hip hop back in Africa. So with that, I was able to meet like the So So Deaf crew. I was able to go to the One Music Fest. I got an all access pass. All that came from just like networking, just meeting somebody and saying, yes, I wasn't paid for that other set I did with the actor from Love Is, but I got so much more from the experience of saying yes and like just doing my best and putting my best foot forward that so many more opportunities opened up for me. So um, I definitely think that there is a blessing when you put others before you or other products before you and just say you're gonna, you know, add your essence to it. People see your work from that and then they'll bless you in the long run. So it might not pay off in the first, you know, the first yes that you give, but later on it'll come down the line. They'll see that you did good work on that and then they'll call you again for something else. So yeah, just put in the investment. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. Come on, resources and knowledge lit. Tiffany, did you can you tell us where to find your work and what you got going on and all of your books and all of that stuff that we would love to support? Um, yes. So you can get my books from uh, Malik Books. Is that Culver City Mall? Or you can get them from my website. It's bytiffanycampbell.com, bytiffanycampbell.com. Um, if you're like a digital reader, they're only like a dollar to download. So it'll be emailed directly to you. Um, and then I have physical copies as well. Uh, my YouTube has all of my previous works on it. It's um, Create Tiff Productions. So it's C-R-E-A-T-I-F-F. Creative Productions. I'll type it in the chat. Um, and you can follow me at simply.creative. So right now, 30 is in its um, festival run. So um, it's not available publicly, but I think Essence may do a live thing. So you may be able to see it live um, when those tickets are actually available <laughs> for the film festival. Um, and then we're screening at Me Show. So, you know, if you're in LA, come out that would be really great and yeah that's about it beautiful beautiful thank you for sharing and again thank you to everybody that pulled up um that participated in this this is wonderful as far as me and I'm concerned like I said this is uh our last session in um our six week live group coaching program as far as the business is of acting is concerned our next cohort will be uh it will begin Monday, July 10th, and that's an, another uh, six-week cycle where we're going to be talking about the business of acting for whoever is um, interested. If you haven't gone through the program, if you have gone through the program, please send it, uh, share it to those who you think would find the information valuable. You know, it's all about networking and sharing resources. So, um, yeah. Um, Can I interrupt you on that? Like, I was going to say that everybody's plugging and stuff, but we're on your platform and I just have to say thank you again to you, man. God bless you, bro. This is beautiful. I instructed my little brother, Ronaldo Medina, to come to the class, and he said that he's been getting gems from y'all in this class, but, you know, primarily from, he calls you his mentor, right, and, and the things of acting and business. So you're a mentor, you know what I'm saying? So thank you for creating space for us and for allowing us to share with one another our stories and what it is that we do. And I encourage everybody to tell, you know, your little brother, your cousin, just like, we need to flood, we need to make Romel's platform famous for all of these reasons that we spoke about. Cause this is really important, bro. So salute and love you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you. Man, love y'all too, man. I'm I'm just a servant, man. I'm just doing the work that I'm called to do. But yeah, man, uh whenever somebody finds value in what I'm doing, I'll, that that's what inspires me. That's what drives me. So thank you for sharing that. Cause that means a lot to me, you know what I mean? Because um, that's what it's all about. So I also have filmmaking resources, everything that I've learned within the past 10 years, you know, I have programs for people who are trying to develop content, people who are trying to get into acting, people who learn the business of acting. I just, you know, I like to think of myself as a creative encyclopedia, you know what I'm saying? And if I don't know something, I'll redirect you to somebody who might know better than I do. So, um, yeah, this goes for everyone who's here, everyone who's going to be watching the playback. You know, this is going to be uploaded on YouTube. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you guys again. I love y'all. And, um, yeah, 
we will we, we'll be in contact. You guys all have or should have my contact information. So if you need anything, feel free to reach out. You know, my resources are your resources. And um, thank you guys again. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Have a good night, y'all. Be safe. Bless y'all.